What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest for the Real Notes season finale is Pitchfork staff writer and music journalist Alphonse Pierre. We spoke about the show Harlem, Miami Vice, black sitcoms, growing up in the age of Dipset, our favorite rap movies of all time, embracing his love of film in high school, his writing career, navigating the always crowded world of rap music, and journalism's place in the music landscape in the 2020s. Come fuck with us. What's cracking? Welcome back. I fucked that up. I don't know why I said what's cracking like that, but um, real notes, we're back. I think this is, I'm pretty sure this is the season finale not to put any sort of wild pressure on any bullshit, but this is the, we, the uh, we've really been doing this for nine months, y'all. Like, I'm still not used to this. It's been nine months that we're still here. Um, name is Dylan, Cinema Sci. I do a lot and it's holiday burnout time. We're all tired, except for this guy who's doing nothing right now, which is fantastic. And I'm happy for him because he deserves it. He's, uh, um, this guy is, uh, this is this is this is somebody who should have been on the show way earlier, but we're finally making it happen now. Um, staff writer over at Pitchfork, um, one of our um, one of rap journalism's sharpest and funniest minds. Um, he's a lover of all music. He'll tell you that himself. He loves all music. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got we got fucking Alphonse Pierre in the building. The man, the myth, the legend. Thank you for coming on the shit, bro. I know this is last minute, but I appreciate you so much. Damn! Thank you for that intro right there. Thank you for having me. You you, you had a good you had a good podcast voice. You know that? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I hate my fucking voice, so thank you for saying that. <laughs> no, nah, it's a good. It's a good voice. I, it's the voice I want to listen to. You know, not a lot of voices are like that. Some voices kind of put you to sleep. Your voice, and I want I want to listen to what you guys say. Thank you, bro. And 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 I feel like I don't say this enough on the show, but like I also work at Pitchfork for people who don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know. I don't know why I felt like. Yeah. So like this is a colleague. This is a friend and he's good people. So I'm happy he's here. Um, and this is this is going to be tight. So let me ask you the first question I ask everybody who comes on the show. What was the last movie or TV show that you watched that you had a strong opinion about? That I had a strong opinion about. Okay, so that's tough. I feel like I watch, I watch a lot of things. I, I mean, I feel like I have a strong opinion about everything that I watch. I right. mean, the last, the last TV show that I watched was probably thirty minutes before this. I was watching that new show on Prime Harlem with Megan Good. Um, How is that? It is is interesting. I mean, it's definitely mad corny at times, but it's kind of enjoyable. It's similar. There was this other show uh over the summer on stars it was called run the world run the world and it's kind of similar it's just like these like black women in harlem just like living in their 30s or whatever and i remember seeing online like on twitter people being like oh what's ruined tv shows these days is that everybody's getting there like writing from twitter like the these these scripts are being written from twitter conversations and right. you could definitely tell some of that is in harlem but like it's also it's also kind of cool you know it's just like these women just like living in their relationships and their jobs and stuff like that and so once you like hit the groove of the show it's cool um what else does i have a strong pick like two days ago i watched a movie called dead bang with don johnson and it was about i, I had a strong opinion because it sucks um it, it, it's, it's about one of my one of my favorite directors john frankenheimer you know he made like manchurian the original manchurian candidate uh the he made uh the made the train you know and this is about Don Johnson. He's like an alcoholic, uh, alcoholic detective on Christmas who finds out that like some Nazis are killing, killed a cop or something. And they're like on the run and they keep killing people. And he's just trying to like hunt them down. It, it, it's, it's, it sounds like it should be way cooler than it actually is. It's kind of boring. And so mm. that shit was like, disappointing because you know frankenheim is my guy and you know, dr drunk don johnson hunted nazi should be cool but it wasn't yeah that sucks yeah man like don johnson's kind of like a 
Like it's like it's hard to fuck up a movie starring Don Johnson. Like I can't even imagine what that must be like. Like it's it like like it would be one thing if it was like real bad, but like boring is worse, you know? Like you think so? I'm not I'm not sure there's a good movie starring Don Johnson. Like <laughs> I don't know. I got. I got to go back. I want to go back and watch the original. Like I hate the Michael Mann Miami Vice movie. Like I think. I think it was trash. Like I know. I know a lot of people will, will ride for it. Like oh, it's actually this. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I want to go back and watch like the original Miami Vice TV show, and especially the pilot, and see. Like I don't know. Just 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 to like experience to see what it's about. See if I actually like. It. I feel like I might like it. And so, and to really get the appeal of Don Johnson, like, I feel like maybe I would be able to understand that more if I watch that. So I'm going to try to Yeah, I get that. Um, A, it's crazy because I think Michael Mann also created the show. He either, like, created or, like, directed the show, right? Miami Vice? Yeah, I think he's either created or executive producer, but he's, he's definitely, like, a major figure behind it. Right. And then on top of that, I saw the Miami, I, I've seen the Miami Vice movie once. I saw it when it first came out. I like, like, it was, what, what was that? Like the early to mid 2000s? Like I saw it with like, like a- Six or something like that. Right. Yeah. I saw it with like a friend at the theater. And like, the only thing I remember is that I thought Gong Lee was hot. And that's the only thing about that movie I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good takeaway. It's a true takeaway. And I mean- to me, that's all. That's all you really need to get from it. You know, it's, it's not. It's not that deep. It's not that entertaining. You know? I think like because this came out after Jamie Foxx did Ray, and I was obsessed with that movie. Like I love the Ray Charles movie still to this day. You were obsessed with Ray? Why? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just I just love I just love Jamie Foxx in that movie. Like it was just a. Uh, like I knew about Ray Charles around that time, I guess, because like my dad had told me about him. But like I saw the movie and I was just like, like, I feel like m- maybe everybody doesn't have this. Correct me if I'm wrong. But like, I feel like everybody has that one like cheesy formulaic biopic that just like sticks to their ribs. And like, that's the one for me. Like I like, like I know that movie front to back. I like I tear up every time his brother falls in the fucking bucket and drowns like spoiler, I guess. But like it, it's a uh, I don't know. That movie just really did a lot to me. And I, I think it came out right before Miami Vice. So I was just like Jamie Foxx the fuck out. I was like, I'm gonna see everything he's in. I don't know why. And then I saw that and I was like, it was fine. It's just whatever that might have that might have like that might have like um might have undone the spell honestly the miami vice movie <laughs> but i haven't seen it in like 15 years so i gotta I mean, jump back that, in. that's right during that like jamie fox like run he's, he's he's mad he's mad hot right there you know he's even like making he has do, do like blame it and stuff they come out probably come out a little bit after that right mm-hmm. and i don't know because i know i know he does he's an ollie in like oh one or something like that and then after that yeah. he, goes on, he goes on like a run yeah and, then, and yeah and then he puts out the um i mean like he had made music before that but then he put out the album he put out unpredictable with fucking the ludicrous song on it and i was I, that 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 was that was a big deal to me <laughs> i like the i like the weirdest shit as a kid I, I i don't i don't know what was going on with me but yeah like that was he was on a run for sure like he was he's like he like kind of occupies that same he's like snoop almost like he like he means different things to different generations of people which is really weird to think about. I never thought about Jamie before. I never thought about him like that before just now. But like, he kind of occupies that Snoop Dogg role to me in a way that's not, he's, he's, he's more, he's like safer than Snoop. Yeah. You know, he, 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 you know, he wasn't like fighting a murder charge or any shit at any point, but like, you know, I don't know, just thoughts. <laughs> it was weird. I never, I feel like I never have been a big Jamie Foxx guy. I never really understood why. I know a lot of people like will like Kate for like his sitcom and stuff like that. Be like, right. the Jamie Foxx show was actually one of the best ones of that era and stuff like that. And I, I just, I just, I just never, I never felt it, you know. And I, I never understood why. Yeah, you know, like I get it. the The sitcom was never my favorite either. Like it's cool, but I always liked Martin more and. 
like you know even even like that only goes so far for me like i like martin but i know people who are like obsessed with martin and i'm like oh, yeah, nah like yeah i mean it could, it could be like i mean I, I like martin too but I also i feel like people that were like there in that moment and watching it love it a little bit more you know they have like a certain they have, they have like there's it's, it's like a place that they have in their heart for it you know like there's a little bit of nostalgia tied to it um i don't know i mean i, I used to, i used to love martin lawrence growing up i used to love martin lawrence movies like blue blue streak was one of my first favorite blue movies, streak. You, know? you know and i haven't watched that in a minute but i used to i used to love that shit that's a good first that's a good first movie wow blue streak <laughs> Have, man, I haven't seen that shit in it forever either. Like that and like, remember Black Knight? You, you, did you like Black oh, Knight? That's the one where he like goes back in time or some shit. <laughs> yeah, that shit was so dumb. But like, that's that's <laughs> one that I remember loving a lot too. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Um. What else? So so yeah. Like what? Um. You know what? Um. What's one of the? What's another one of the first movie experiences you can remember having? Like it could be like at the theater, your cousin's house wherever like aside from blue streak or, or or if blue streak is a distinct enough memory like what was you know like what's a what's like one of your first movie memories you can remember having like in a movie theater or just like a movie that i just loved as like a kid either one which i wh- whichever one comes to mind um i mean my earliest movie theater memory is probably like spy kids 3d and just like going there I was, I was probably that's probably mad young had like had like the glasses on and i'm not even sure those 3d glasses actually did anything you remember those 3d glasses they used to they used to have that were like plastic or like they were almost like cardboardy right and yeah you you put those on and we feel i feel like they didn't do shit it was just were trash they look cool but they did nothing like they were just like the red and blue joints too or, or maybe they might even be clear i don't remember but yeah. they didn't it's, do shit the spike his 3d is not good either I, nah. like <laughs> like I, I i remember i remember thinking that then i was just like this whole movie is built around this gimmick so once you watch it away from that gimmick is there's nothing to it like at least a lot of the 3d movies that came that came out like in like the 2010s like it wasn't made like the, the gimmick didn't shape the movie you know but that whole movie was based around that and so once right. you watch it on like tv or watch it on like a dvd or something like that you can't enjoy it anymore. And damn, come come and think of it. Are three movies done? They like I oh, man, that's so crazy. I was just thinking about this like a week ago. So like the theater still exists, but like people don't fuck with the 3D like that anymore. And and like that's fine because I always kind of felt like it was a gimmick. Like <laughs> they did it, they did it a couple of times, and then they were like, we're gonna install 3D theaters in every 3d screens in every movie theater and like it was like the thing to do because then they could charge extra money for the tickets and shit and like they like real d 3d theaters like still exist but they don't like they used to advertise for them like see it in real d like they don't do that shit anymore so i think i think they've been done for at least a couple of years like nobody cares you know unless unless you're at like disney world or six flags or something nobody gives a fuck nobody gives a fuck yeah, I, I just realized that saying that. But like going back to the original question, I remember when I was a kid, I used to like, I, I used to like, I, I like a little notebook and stuff like that. And I used to just like write down, like I used to just make lists, like my top 50 favorite NBA players, my top 50 favorite like movies and stuff like that. And I, I used to, I used to always make lists like that. I'm trying to think of the movies that were top. I mean, I used to just like comedies and stuff like that. Um, I used to love like Adam Sandler comedies, Martin Lawrence comedies, uh Ben Stiller type things. I used to, I used to love like shit that like a five six year old kid like wasn't supposed to watch. Yeah, you know, I remember I like a. I remember I had like we, we called I don't know just like American Pie or something like that. But oh shit, look look at this. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think. But I definitely did love Adam Sandler, and Martin Lawrence movies, Bad Boys. Yeah, classic. I, I love that. Yeah, Bad Boys is great. I Um, I definitely definitely feel like I liked Wild Wild West, even though (laughs) in in retrospect, that's probably a bad choice. 
but it, but it, but it was it was just Will Smith, and I was like, oh shit, of course I'm watching that. You know, don't let any don't let anybody make you feel bad about like it. Wild Wild West. That's one of my favorite movies, even though it like it's awful. No, it's no, so no, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> it's Wild, so Wild, 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 Wild West is not one of your favorite movies. Take take that back. But, <laughs> you, you all here lying. <laughs> I love watching that shit. I don't care. Like if it's on, I'm gonna watch it. Like it's just I don't know. Like I I have a lot of really good memories associated with that movie. Like I used to watch it with my family and like my sister and I were like like were really into it and like the and, and like the song was everywhere when the movie came out too. Like I don't know. Like it, it's it's just like it's just dumb and I like it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, so so yeah, let me so let me take it back. It's probably not one of my favorite movies, but it's a movie yeah. like. What'd you say? So yeah, you gotta take that back. You, you, can't, you can't let that you can't that let, let that live on the internet. <laughs> That's fine, but I wanna I wanna say it's like a it, it's like the Matrix Revolutions for me. Like it's a movie that I recognize as like garbage, just like complete fucking trash. But if it's on, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna sit down and just like it's familiar. I like it. It makes me feel good. And I'm like, this shit sucks. I like this. I don't know. That that's 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 just how I am sometimes. <laughs> but like yeah. I, I but like I've seen Wild Wild West so many times. Sorry. I just you you just you just took me on a trip. That was a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, I've never seen a Matrix movie. I've never seen any of them. Okay. I mean, like at some point, watch the first one because it's like it's like one of them ones, honestly. But you know the, the other two the other two is whatever not a big deal but i think it's one of those things that was so so big in pop culture that i almost felt like i saw it without seeing it which is not true but it was just like oh i'll just watch like i just watched this some other time whenever you just keep pushing it off pushing it off i don't know i feel like that happens with some of the classic movies that you feel like you heard around like since like you were a kid that you're just like, oh, I could literally watch this whenever. I mean, just push it off, push it off, push it off, and then you just end up just never watching it. Oh yeah, no, no, I get that. The, like the only the only reason I watched it the first time I did is because um my, my um we had it on DVD, and like because I was seven I think when it came out, so you know like I missed the theater part. I just kind of watched it at home one day, and I was like, this is pretty cool. So like yeah. I think I, I've seen it maybe like twice, maybe twice in my life. But I was like, okay, I get it. Like this is really cool, interesting ideas. It, the shit looks cool as hell. Bullet time, slow motion, whatever. Like it, it's just fun. But uh, well, I, I don't know if I call the Matrix fun, but it's like, it's cool, you know. Um, so now I get it. Like it, it's definitely one of those movies you could just like absorb through osmosis. And like if you've seen, like. I feel like everybody's at least seen like the bullet, the bullet time scene where he's like stretched back with the shit yeah, flying yeah. over him. Like it, it's like, there's more to it than that. But like, that's the thing that everyone remembers. Like if you ask somebody like, what's your favorite part of the matrix? It's going to be that. Yeah. I think when I was a kid, I thought that shit was from scary movie too for Matt Long. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's like, I was like, yo, it's scary. They, they came up with some shit. That's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's from the matrix, bro. Um, but I mean, I feel like I should like the Matrix. I mean, it has Keanu Reeves, man. I, I, I love I love Point Break, you know. As yeah. Lord Whisper, I love Deep Cover. Um, so, I mean, I mean, yeah, I just got I just got to watch it. Yeah, you know, like the new ones coming out. I think in uh, I think it's out like right before Christmas. I, I think it's out next week, um, or it, or it'll be out next week from when we're recording this. But uh, try it, you know, like it's cool. Like it's it's uh, people were mean to Keanu Reeves back in the day. I feel like, and I'm happy that everybody likes him now because it seemed like people were just kind of like, I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I just noticed a lot of people like made fun of Keanu Reeves, but like everybody loves Keanu Reeves now. And that makes me happy because he's great. What, what, do, what do you think it was? And, and do you think like the, sometimes like the pendulum like swings too far back, like the love of Keanu Reeves is like almost like blind now. It's just like, Oh my God, he's he's the great. Like, I mean, I, I like Keanu Reeves too. I like John Wick movies, but sometimes yeah, it's, it's a little it's a little overblown. Like when he he made that appearance in uh, what was it Always Be My Maybe? The yeah, the yeah. Came out. I, I, uh -huh. thought it, I thought it was cool, but it was like it was gassed up. 
And I mean, I guess sometimes celebrities hit that hit that peak, you know, where everybody just wants to see them and everything. You know, like somebody like Tom Holland's there right now, you know, where everybody's just like any anytime they anytime somebody sees like a video of them, they're going nuts. Right. And it just happens sometimes. Yeah. And like because like, you know, obviously the Matrix happened. It made Keanu one of like the biggest like like that was like his he, he had made big movies before that but that was his like everybody knew who keanu reeves was like you ever see we're talking about rom-coms you ever see that um you ever see that movie the lake house it's nah, this, never seen it. so it's this drama uh, it's keanu reeves and sandra bullock and like they both own this house that has like a magical mailbox in it and like they can like mail each other stuff through time Cause I think like he owned the house like 15 years before she did. It's one of those, you know, like it's, 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 it's like they're talking to each other through the mailbox and they fall in love and they wind up meeting in different times. And I think he's, there's, I think he's like supposed to die in a car crash for some reason. And like the whole third act of the movie is, is about Sandra Bullock trying to save him from being in the car crash because of a message that she got through their time traveling mailbox it's one of those you know like he made he, he made that like five years after the matrix and like so i can kind of understand if people were kind of thinking he was a little goofy you know like that's like that's kind of the, the 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 lake house is cute but it's like one of those like uh like kate and leopold like one of those like time traveling romance movies that's just like a lot you know like you only make those once you hit like a certain point of overexposure like Hugh yeah. Jackman made that right after the X-Men movies so like everybody knew him as Wolverine and then it's like oh of course you make the romance of course you make the the Kate and Leopold time traveling romance movie like yeah so I, I think I think you're right that does sound terrible <laughs> it's 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 a lot but it's you know once again I'm I'm big on I'm big on terrible but fun, you know, like that's 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 my whole thing. I'll watch I'll watch it if it like gets a reaction out of me, whatever that reaction is. Yeah, no, no, I watched the other day. That was mad good. Was I, think, I think I think I think I think it's one of my favorite movies now. It was uh, a Jules uh, Dawson movie from like it was called uh, it was Night in the City. And I, I, it, it's from like 19. 1950 or something like that and it's like a noir about like uh Richard Widmark plays like this like kind of like con man just like uh trying to like start a wrestling promotion everything he just touches like turns to shit and it's it's, it's kind of basically like uncut gems in like London or something like that like it, it, it's, it's kind of similar to that I've, I've been thinking about that movie for like it has to be like all week and it, it I I got put onto it by, I like watching like uh, TCM and this is guy Eddie Mueller on TCM. He has like this thing called Noir Alley and like every week or something, he like airs a noir. And e even, even when I don't catch that, I'll go back on YouTube and watch his videos and be like, like usually somebody records it on their phone or something and be like, here's Eddie Mueller, like talking for 10 minutes about some, some noir from 1948 or something like that. And I remember I watched one of the videos. He was talking about Night in the City, and I watched it. And I, I was blown away by it. And I've been thinking about that movie. I, I, I even I even got Eddie Mueller's like uh, noir book, and I'm I've been thinking about that movie all week. That's so hard. Like that's see, like Turner Classic Movies is that's part of the reason why I wish I still had cable because I also used to love watching TCM, and like you you just pick up on so many you just pick up on so much cool shit just like leaving leaving that channel on you know like there's this um i also had no idea that noir alley existed so yeah i gotta i'm gonna I'm I'm go find all of that later thank you you just put me on thank you so like there's this other there's this other noir that i really fuck with I, I haven't seen it in years but i have the dvd it's um i think it's a criterion collection movie it's called uh les samurai you ever hear that before that's the one with alan delon mm-hmm no, nah, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Nah, that's a cool, that's a cool movie right there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been a long ass time since I watched it, but like that was the last. Like, I can't think of like I'm not, not that I'm not big on noir, but I don't watch it often enough. So like the ones that I've seen kind of stick out to me a little more because I haven't seen like dozens of them. Like, but that's one that I always think about. You know, like it's just I, I just love the atmosphere and like the gray suit and the hat and just like, and just like the mix of uh the mix of um 
the mix of noir and and um um the samurai and bushido code stuff is just i like i love i love mixing and like juxtaposition and stuff like that and like mashups it's basically it's it's basically just like it's it's basically just like a really mature grown like mashup like I don't want to call it a YouTube poop because that kind of feels like that, like, like that makes it feel a little sillier than it is or like a lot sillier than it is. But it's basically just like the grown up version of that. You know, like what if this like what if this like detective dude was basically a samurai? Like that's like yeah. some nerd shit, you know, like <laughs> like, like grown up mature nerd shit. So, yeah, no, nah, yeah, but no, ours are cool. I probably watch like at least one or two every week. Just because, I mean, I, I just like genre, whether it's music or movies or something like that. I love things that are like deeply entrenched into a genre and find ways to expand or like be creative inside of a genre. And there are so many noirs that do that. And so, you know, like the, the list goes on, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Noir is really underappreciated. I love, I love it as a genre. And, um, well, a that b that makes sense for you like you, like you're you're a, you you seem like a specialist in that way and that's something that i've always really loved and admired about your writing but we can get but we can get to that later because um uh i think the next noir that i want to try to watch is um fucking guillermo del toro just is putting out a noir movie which looks crazy nightmare alley yeah it's the remake yeah. of the uh, edmund golden movie with tyrone power that, right yeah I, I i don't like the original that much uh and i don't know if i'm gonna like the, I, I, I don't know if i'm a big guillermo del toro guy but i mean the, the original is worth watching i mean tyrone powers tyrone powers a cool actor and so i mean and it does it takes place in like a circus or something right um yeah I haven't seen it in a minute, and I, I don't know. I I, I can just see where Guillermo del Toro is going to take that. He always takes everything with those like fantastical elements in it, and that puts that spin on it. And the the original is really just like a, a hard boiled noir that happens to take place in that setting. Right. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see it eventually too. You know? Yeah, like it wouldn't surprise me if he like read the script and saw like like two scenes take place in like a freak show. And he's like, yeah, let me do that. Like, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he just hopped on right away. That's the type of shit he would do. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love Guillermo del Toro, but um, uh, I, it's so funny. I was, I was just talking to my partner about about Guillermo del Toro last night because I saw that Nightmare Alley was coming out, and yeah. it, and um, I want to rewatch the Hellboy movies, but I don't want to get too distracted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Guillermo del Toro though but like so obviously you have a really like you have a really extensive and like deep relationship with movies which is great you know like that's like that's just fire because movies are great but like what but like what's the like is there was there a specific movie for you that made you kind of fall in love with the medium like not even on some like art shit but just like you know like and, like is there one specific movie that you could kind of use as like a you connected with it emotionally or like it made you appreciate the form or you just like or you could even just really really like it like it doesn't have to be that deep like is there one movie that kind of like engendered this like love of movies into you i mean i've definitely always liked movies but i guess i've always just liked movies that i don't know they, they were usually comedies and stuff like that but i think not not that there's anything wrong with that like, I think comedies could be great. Uh, but, uh, I mean, definitely, like, seeing, like, Do the Right Thing or something definitely just, like, is, like, a springboard into just, like, everything, you know? It's just, that, 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 that that's, that's, like, a real, like, starting point for me. Because then you go, like, oh, man, Do the Right Thing. This should have, this probably won every single award. You go back and then you look at the Oscars and you look at, then you look at that, you're like, oh, what, what, what is this Oscars board? And then you, you, you from, and from there, you like, then you start reading about Spike and learning about Spike and you go to Spike's list of favorite movies. And so, I mean, Spike Lee is definitely like the introductory figure to me getting deeper into movies. Right. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, like, I don't know if it happened in that exact order for me, but do the right thing was definitely a big, I get it. Like do the right thing was one of those, like it just completely breaks your mind open. And it's just like, he's so passionate. Like even when his movies suck, you know, like 
even even like his worst movies are really interesting to me because they're just so passionate but like yeah. he doesn't have like very many bad movies but like do the right thing was like i think i had the uh I got this like book, this like behind the scenes book about like how they made the movie and how it was made over the course of like a couple of weeks. And it talked about like the budget. And um, I think there's even like an entire section on the fucking um, uh, the scene where he's rubbing ice on Rosie Perez's nipples. Like it's it, it's 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 one of those books, you know, like so. Uh, yeah, like Spike just yeah. really. Yeah. 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 You know. And, and I would be tripping if I didn't mention back in when I was in sixth grade, between sixth grade and eighth grade in my middle school on uh, Staten Island, we, we had, we, we had like, we got to choose an elective, you know, some people choose band or whatever. Some people not, and my elective was like photo journalism or whatever. And in this class, we had this teacher or whatever. And we basically just watched old TV and old movies. Like he would just show like, like here, like, oh, today we're watching the episode of I Love Lucy, or like, you know, the episode of I Love Lucy on like, the, when she's in the factory and moving on and shit and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, some weeks we're watching like a Buster Keaton movie or like a, like a Harold Lloyd movie or a Charlie Chaplin movie. And the next week we're watching like a Marx Brothers movie or something like that. And I think that really got me comfortable with watching older movies, black and white movies. Cause I, cause before that, you're like, I'll never watch a movie in black and white. Why would I watch something like that? Why would I watch a silent movie? Why would I watch something where, the, where these guys are talking you know, like that old timey speak they do? Um, and then we started watching Hitchcock movies in that class. And he, he showed us like The Birds. He showed us uh, Rear Window, which is probably like one of the first big ones that for me, like, you know, I was like, yo, this is sick. Um, and so definitely like the Hitchcock he was showing us was cool. He would always show us, even if he didn't show us the whole movie, he would show us clips. And then from there, I remember from, from around like eighth grade or something, he was showing us the rear window. I was looking at like 1950s movies. So I went and I remember from, I think back when Netflix had DVDs when I was mm-hmm. in like eighth or ninth grade or something like that, I got like a DVD of uh, On the Waterfront. And I, I remember I remember watching that as the Ilya Kazam movie with like Marlon Brando. And I remember watching that. I was like, yo, shit, shit is sick. And so from there, I was really watching like a lot of movies that I feel like our hearts, like it, it just it just introduced me to movies that I wouldn't have been introduced to before because usually to get access to those older movies, you have to have somebody that's like older than you being like, yo, you should go watch this or else you're not going to just go throw on like some old Marlon Brando movie for no reason. Right. And, you know, and that class, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like privileged to take that class, you know, just to be able to be introduced to things that you normally wouldn't be. Right. Nah, like school and shit like that definitely plays a huge role in what you get exposed to and uh that's dope that you even had a class like that like I feel like I feel like I might have too I don't know if it was like a class specifically wait no no I'm tripping I totally did but um it was yeah just just like being in a position to have that kind of exposure like before you hit college is something that like I feel like we could take it. I, I feel like it's easy to take something like that for granted, like in the moment, but it's, you know, like yeah. right now sitting around and thinking about it, it's just like shit. Like it yeah. really started there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause like what, cause yeah, cause like what average fucking like eighth grader in like the fucking mid to late two thousands is going to be watching Alfred Hitchcock movies, you know, or even, or even Spike Lee, honestly, like that, that even feels a little like out of our age range on just some like regular shit, you know? No, yeah, it's crazy. Like, big up to that teacher because, like, you're, you're, you're like 11 years old, and he's just like, so I have, I have this class of 11 years old, of a, a, like kids that are 11 years old from just in New York. Let me just show them strangers on the train today. Like, what? Like, who, who does that? And, <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm sure he, he enjoyed that job too. Cause I, I mean, that sounds like a pretty cool job just to show people that, even if probably a lot of the class like hated on it, they were probably like, yo, shut this shit off, bro. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I probably do that sometimes too, but no, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. But then, you know, like at that point, you got to appease people and just like throw on white chicks one day and just catch everybody off guard type shit. (laughs) (laughs) Because like, nah, yeah. You know what's crazy? 
before we move on, now that I'm thinking about it, I've never seen white chicks all the way through in one sitting in my life. Mm. I've, I, like, like I've seen the whole thing, but only in pieces. I mean, I mean, that's probably good enough. That's the way the movie is meant to be watched. You know, you, right. you're, not, you're, not, you're not meant to sit through the whole movie, but uh, I, feel, I feel like you're not missing anything by not sitting through it. Right. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's no it's no strangers on a train, obviously. Like, or um what's a you see, it's weird because like now we're talking about Hitchcock. I was I was like I could be really stubborn as a kid, and I was like I loved stuff like that, but for some reason I was just like hating on Hitchcock when I first saw a lot of his stuff. I think Rear Window was the one, like you know, like you that that was the one that really convinced me that this like, oh shit, like this is really tight. It was like that. I liked rope a lot and uh what else it was that rope and the birds i think and psycho eventually you know like yeah um i still i still gotta watch more hitchcock i feel like i haven't watched a lot like i remember in that class we used to watch a lot like the like early like british stuff too like we watched maybe it was like the 39 steps or something like that but there's still a lot of the stuff i have to watch like i have to watch uh the lady vanishes and Rebecca and all, all, all that stuff like that. And the, the, I mean, the guy was prolific, you know, and he, he put yeah. out a lot of movies. And I mean, he's another one of those directors too. I'm just like, uh, I, I, could, I could always watch this, you know, I could always get the DVD, you know, I could always, I have a DVD next to me right now. I actually have a copy of the, of the verdict with Paul Newman right next to me from the, from the New York public library. I got to watch it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, probably, I'm probably gonna watch this later but <laughs> <laughs> oh man you're my type of nigga son that's crazy it's <laughs> just like he's like i just have a dvd next to me like <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> i love it um let's uh let's run back to music though so like you obviously you know like i said before you have this really extensive relationship with movies which is super tight so like when so like when did when did you first really start getting into music like when did you first know that this was more than just like a, I'm a casual listener type shit. Um, I mean, I never really, I feel like I never really had that moment where I was more than just a casual listener. I mean, I've, I've always been like listening to a lot of rap and rap, especially just from growing up in New York. Like I remember back when I was a kid in Canarsie, Brooklyn, just hanging out with my dad and he just had Hot 97 on, just listening to like whatever's on the radio and stuff like that. Uh, I remember after school when I was very young, you know, I, I would come home, watch Rap City, watch, mm-hmm. watch videos. I, I, I would just, I would just watch a lot of music videos, you know. And then eventually, you know, uh, I, I, I used, to, I used to just, I feel like I used to love anybody with cornrows, bro. I used to love Alan Iverson. I used to love Lil Romeo. I used to love, I used to love, <laughs> I used to love Lil Wayne. Anybody, anybody with braids, I loved. Just got, just got. I thought, I thought, I, I thought it was cool. So like I wanted some so bad, but you know. I had a Haitian dad, so my hair was always buzz. Uh, <laughs> not, and so I, that's probably why I love them. Cause I was like, yo, man, if I didn't have a Haitian dad, I could probably have some sick ass cornrows right now. But <laughs> I just had to channel that love into Alan Iverson and uh, like Bow Wow and shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I mean, I guess around like, middle school or whatever I probably started getting just like my own taste and just like really looking for things on my own just has you know have, have my laptop or whatever or computer and I would just go and search and I'm trying to think of what I was listening to uh it was definitely just very just like east coast centric a lot of a lot of New York rap you know yeah dipset and all that stuff I was uh I was never a g-unit guy um but uh but that 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 wave kind of missed me. I I, I never I, it never really touched me. But uh, yeah, it was kind of just like probably around middle school. Probably started just like finding things on my own. I guess that's a little that's after. I guess that's Dipset, but a little after. It's balling around then. Right. Yeah. Totally. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like for a lot of people, like, cause I th- cause I feel like you're like a couple years younger than me. I feel like for people in like our age bracket, like everybody was on the dip set train when that Jim Jones album dropped. Like, like, like when we fly high happened, like that was, the, that was the first time that I was like, Oh, like, who's this? And then I was like, Oh, that's Jim Jones. And like, and like, that was around the time that, um, 
uh, Juels put out the whistle song, which was like that. That was everywhere, you know, like, and um, that was kind of my introduction into Dipset, which is weird to say, I guess, but like, yeah. <laughs> like I remember in school there was always arguments, not even arguments, but I remember pro- probably like the most anticipated album of like me being in like sixth grade or something is like people waiting on the Joel Santana like Lil Wayne album that like ne- that like never came wow. and I, 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 I remember people talking about that I remember, I remember people hyping that up and like I mean I want I wanted that too but and then it just like never really materialized the way people wanted so I mean that that, that was like a big moment that never really came to fruition damn man i completely forgot about that that's so crazy like it's like it's crazy it's crazy to consider that like we grew up in we grew up in that era where the internet was first starting to take a hold of rap like that was like that was like the ringtone rap era like that was like when the internet and rap were really first starting to get acquainted on some like oh this is like forever type shit you know and like like our and like our tastes were just kind of like mutated by that and um, just like between the between the Joels and Lil Wayne tape that never happened and fucking just like, I don't know. It just felt it, it, it just felt like from that, like from that specific point, like music just it just like it. The stream started and it just never ended, you know, like we just kept on. It's just it's just been this way. I don't know. Like I, it, it's hard. It's almost hard to remember a time where like that relationship wasn't a constant, you know, yeah. and that's both good and bad, obviously, but mostly good because, <laughs> yeah. you know, shit is tight. Yeah. It, it really started to move fast because, I mean, I think by the time I was like toward at least moving toward the end of middle school, like Drake and like Kid Cudi would come out, you know, like, right. and and I mean that that that's nothing new. I mean, a, a lot of people felt the same way, even 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 though we we, we kind of got like some look, we got we got we, we kind of got like some revisionist history going with the with the early days of Drake, mm. um, because it, it it was not smooth. Like it, it was not like he just like dropped song dropped a couple songs and was the biggest rapper in the world. Yeah. It was talk there, about there was, it. <laughs> there was a there was a lot of pushback to it. Um, I, I remember like. When was it? Maybe I was in ninth grade. I mean, I think it was. I think in ninth grade, uh, he, he was he was definitely getting pretty big. And I remember I was on I was on the basketball team in school, and I remember we'd be in like the lock we'd be in the locker room. Everybody'd be like, "Oh, you know, I was in the Dream Chasers, like Meek Mill." And I'd be like, and, I, and I'd be like, "Yo," and I would like play some Drake or something like that. Everybody be like, turn that shit off, bro. Everybody, be <laughs> they'd be like, "Why is he singing?" Like, and and, and I'm not trying to say like. Drake's first, not, this is not one of those things where like Drake is the first rapper to be singing and rapping or something like that. No, right. but I mean, people, pe- a lot of people did not respond to it well. And I mean, a lot of people did too, because the songs were huge, but especially like in this like New, New York teenagers locker room area where everybody just wants to hear me- uh-huh. Meek Mill freestyles and like, be like, yo, you, you, you put on the soul tape, man. Come on, you, you know, fat. <laughs> <laughs> Put on Fab Soul Tape. Come on, turn that off. Oh my man. God, son! So it it, it, was, it was not like smooth sailing to just be putting on Drake in like 2010 or whatever. <laughs> right, because like, because like people people forget like that was like that was still Degrassi era Drake. So so like there are still people who are like the fucking wheelchair kid from Degrassi is rapping. Like you know like that was that was like a real thing that people thought, you know, like, obviously that's a very fucked up thing, but like, you know, it's just like, that was, that, that was the, that was people's like, I almost like, you could almost compare it to like when Die Hard came out, like Bruce Willis was only known for like making like weird romantic comedies and shit. And people are like, this dude, like this guy is like the action hero. Like, are you serious? And of course, you know, now, all he does is action movies and of course now drake is the biggest rapper on the face of the planet you know like it's yeah. it's like like and but like that's what the perception was it was like it like like people obviously took to it like you said but it took it took a while for everyone to get on board like everybody wasn't on like everybody wasn't on board when so far gone dropped because like i remember i wasn't 
Like it took me a while to really get into Drake. Like I didn't really like get it completely until mm, man, like either, either, um, either take care or maybe even, uh, why am I forgetting all the names right now? Um, God damn. The one that came right after, um, nothing was the same. There we go. Yeah. Nothing was the same. Like, you know, it's, but yeah, you're right. You're right. There's, there's, there's some, there's some people, people, people don't want to admit that they, that they weren't on the Drake train early because you know, he's yeah. fucking Drake. <laughs> yeah. Not there's anything wrong with that. It's just like, yeah, you know, we, we just think of it as like, he just came and was like the biggest rapper like instantly, but it w- w- wasn't really like that. But I also think that like my, my like own personal taste really started to like develop, you know, I, I got really into like Raider clan and stuff like that, you know, like ASAP came around. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to a lot of like, metro zoo and like uh i mean denzel curry was denzel curry was a huge rapper for me like yeah um i remember i was like yo he's kind of like the same age as me because he was was like the he was like the youngest member of raider clan and he he was he was he was rapping a little fast and and raider clan like introduced me to a lot of like all like that old memphis and like houston and like all, 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 all those types all those types of scenes and uh that's all still. I mean, of course, in New York, I was I was listening to Pro Era again. I was like, "Yo, Joey Badass, like kind of like the same as me, listening to Capital Steez." Yeah. I, I, I was I was I was I was all about that, and so that that's like definitely when like my taste, my own personal taste, was developing. Right. Yeah, I feel it. Like that was because yeah, because like I was in college when all that stuff started to pop off. I might have been like a because yeah, yeah, I might have been like a freshman or a sophomore and so, somewhere around then when like Raider Clan and Pro Era and then was starting to pop off. And that was and you know, like I gravitated toward a lot of that shit, too, because I spent <laughs> I spent a lot of high, I spent a lot of high school in um I spent a lot of high school in like a <laughs> I discovered Doom. And then all I wanted to hear was just 90s, like 90s, early 2000s shit, like all the time. I was like, like, like I was one of those kids for a while. I be, like, like I grew out of it and I'm happy I did. But like, I was so stubborn. And yeah. then, and you know, like high I just, has, every high school has the doom kids. Yeah, man. Come on. Like, I, yeah, like I fully admit it. Like I was I was I was in it. And uh, obviously I popped out of it a little bit for certain shit. Like I was really, um, um, I was really big on DJ Unk and Walk It Out at the time. And like, you know, like I had a, like, it was, it was like that. And like all the, like, like everything happening in the South at that time was just like all my shit. But like, you know, like, you know, like it was, it was really cool to see groups like Raider Clan and Pro Era pop up and like have these, uh, you know, like kind of like remix like the older New York sound and the older Memphis sound and like kind of make it their own. Like it kind of felt that kind of felt like ours in a way that uh, you know, obviously stuff like <laughs> like fucking like Nas's hip hop is dead didn't, you know, like which is which is like I was I was I was really pushing that shit as a kid and I'm I feel like such a fucking asshole for it. But like <laughs> You're pushing hip hop is dead as a kid. My God, so, like I, I was, I was, I was, I was on some other shit. Don't, don't, I don't, I don't, I can't even explain it. Like, <laughs> did you, did you ever own physical CDs? Yeah, you did. I did. What, what, what were, the, what were the C? Like, was it like a large collection? Where was it just like a few? I feel like I only had like, because I feel like when I was first, when I was really getting into music, um, the CDs were almost at the end of they were like being phased out and it was like streaming mm-hmm. like things are streaming coming around and so i never really got the chance to buy that many cds i've only i mean the cds i have were like fucking like john cena and shit but like <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but, so i I, ne- I never really got i never really got the chance to like i think the ones the two cds i really bought myself that i really wanted i bought uh gucci mains uh roger davis state Virtual roger mm. davis and I had that and that future Pluto on CD actually, which which kind which kind of sounds crazy because the you don't associate the, those albums sound kind of more recent than CD ever, but that, but but that that's like the tail they end. Do of, right, yeah. It's like the tail end. As a, like I said, it was the tail end of that era, and those are really like the only CDs I really. I think I had a D12 CD or some shit, <laughs> uh, but I really didn't have that many. So I was going to do so. Yeah. So I actually did have a bunch of CDs like because um, my because my father is like he's he's 79 now. 
No, no, no. Just kidding. He's 70. Wait, hang on. 76 or 77. I forget how old he is, but he was yeah. an old, he was an older parent. That's what I'm trying to say. So he yeah. was really big on CDs. So he would buy my sister and I quite a few CDs. I had, um, I had, Ky- I had every Kanye album up until 808s on CD. I had the Digimon soundtrack for the movie on <laughs> CD with the <laughs> like that was like that got me into that got me into like ska and like harder rock too cuz like cause like, the, cause like that had that had like it had it had a uh, had like a mighty mighty boss tone song on it that 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 soundtrack is fucking crazy so i had that um i had outcast speaker box of love below on CD um i had what else <laughs> i had maya's mood ring on cd like my dad had his whole own collection because he's like he was like the he's like the tech guy like any any new technology that's out even to this day like he's gotta have it like he's yeah. still the guy who's like messing around with all like the fucking like sample kits on like and, and like logic pro like so he like had he had the big ass cd changer with like all the fucking everything in it so like cds were just like always around and i had a bunch and i still buy them actually if like like if people make them i have um i have one of those like old crosley joints that has a cd player on it so if like yeah. somebody's selling a cd i'll buy it and i just um like i had a, you know i had one of those cd booklets that was like filled i like it's i think i still have it like in my room somewhere i might have to dig for it but like it, it was like blue and black it, it was kind of like tiger stripes like blue and black and it um yeah, so I had CDs. <laughs> I had I had CDs. No, 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 but that's cool that you like introduce to it through like your dad and stuff. Because I get, because you know, like I guess parents are like important in like whatever raises you are important in introducing you to whatever they listen to or like to or how they listen to music. And so that's cool, you know. Right. Yeah. Nah. I um I tried my hardest not to take advantage of that because I kind of realized early on like how much music meant to him and, and and to my mother too my mother obviously had a bunch of my mother loves music and she introduced me to a lot of like older rock stuff and like she was really into Sting it's crazy because she was also really into like LL Cool J and like yeah. and like she was she was into like like early 2000s like head sprung era LL Cool J <laughs> so like so like that album was always going she was big on the um she was big on the Mace, uh, the Diddy remix of fucking Breeze Stretch Shake. Like she had very, like she was like hard rock and easy listening, but then like the most random rap shit, just like out of the blue. She would like love like Outcast The Way You Move, which is like, I mean, like that song was huge, but like it would just be like these random pockets. So like, it was just like my dad with like all of his Motown and like his sort of fascination with rap. And then my mom with all of that other shit and like that kind of the two of them informed my musical taste so much. So you, I mean, like, you're so right. And I, um, I thank them for that, honestly, because it just, it just made me like, as I got older, I wanted to explore more, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people can't say that. Like I still, I feel more open to newer shit now than I did when I was fucking 17, you know? And that's weird, but I love it. Like I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm just glad that I haven't like shut down yet, you know? Yeah. No, that's cool. I know, I know like the things my parents would play would be like, they were, they were a lot different than the things that I I just listened to on my own, but you know, it still made me just like appreciate other genres, you know, like my dad listened to a lot of Haitian compo music. And so that, that, all, all that stuff still sounds good to me now. And my mom was like, my mom just listened to a lot of like, just like pop music. And she was also like, like she went to LaGuardia in New York. So she, you know, she, she loved classic. Mm. She, she played the cello at LaGuardia. And so she just, she loved like a lot of classical music. So she would always play a lot of that. And so th- th- those are just things that I, w- I was around growing up that just probably just made me just like open to other genres, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's like, and that's a cool way to be because like obviously we have our preferences and um you know we're both rap fans here but like it's 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 nice to have that <coughs> excuse me to have that base and to not like be put off by like obviously you don't have to like everything unless you do have to like everything but like <laughs> um you know but it's just good to it's just good to have that like expansive and just and just 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 to be curious 
like not even to like be open to everything but to just be curious like being curious is cool it is um hell yeah so before i move on to some more like specific like art uh, like writing related shit like as, so like as you're kind of developing these like as, as you're developing your taste in like music and movies like was there ever was there ever a moment where you like consciously linked film and music together in your head like it could even be something as simple as like oh like this movie I liked had like a cool soundtrack or something but like it doesn't have to be that like was there ever like a time where you were like oh like these two things go together hmm I can't think of a specific moment where where I was thinking about that. I mean, I I mean like fight the power playing throughout do the right thing was definitely like something that something that you notice. Um, even if I wasn't like registering it or thinking about it in any sort of like deeper way, I, I definitely I definitely noticed it. Um, I mean movie star and rappers i've always been obsessed with movie star and rappers or, or mm. rappers being in movies just because just because i've always loved rap and rappers and watching them do things outside of rap is always you know like either like hilarious or fascinating and so like watching something like um maybe something like belly or something like that where you know you're basically like watching like a hour and 45 minute music video uh and i mean sick <laughs> and so right. i mean <laughs> th those are probably some of some of the ones that make me think about that yeah i mean like those are all great examples like belly is a you know like belly is a classic regard regardless of whether or not the movie is actually good like this shit is a classic like hype williams directed the shit out of that movie and like the opening scene alone is just like just them walking through the club and everything's all black and blue like ugh like just so much style bro like and, and the movie's definitely good you, you can't you can't hedge on belly and then go all out on wild wild west man come on <laughs> <laughs> oh no nah, that's fair no nah, that's fair i like belly i like belly i just like i i just rewatched it again recently and i and like i rem like it wasn't as great as i remembered it being but um i still love it it's it's belly it's a classic i'll never i'll never let go of that movie and the soundtrack like the fucking like come on like the soundtrack for belly was something else too yeah it's, it's one of those movies that's better if you don't uh try to watch it again um or just watch just watch the pieces of it that are really good and just be, tell yourself that is that movie is really good even though right. like a minute ago i was just like getting at you for saying that for hedging about it but the definitely <laughs> part, parts of it where you're watching it you're just like Okay, they, they, they need to like, especially like once it starts getting to like that like last 30 minutes where everything just starts speeding up and Nas is like, yeah. I'm going to Africa. I'm like, I'm like, yo, where where are you going? Like, he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm out, man. I'm going to Africa. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, just just, just watch, watch that first like 10, 15 minutes. You're, you're, you'd be like, yeah, this, this shit's sick. Then, Hell yeah. Like I feel that I almost feel the same way. You know, I almost feel the same way about state property with fucking with fucking beans and shit. Like that's it. Like that's another one that's like, you know, you don't need to watch it again. But like it was it was cool when it came out. But <laughs> but, you, but you're almost going into that one knowing that it's going to be like an extremely like like be belly is like 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 state property is like a B movie. You know, it's like it's like what yeah B might even be giving it too much. But like you know it's. it's <laughs> So, so you're going into it knowing it's going to have like all those flaws, but Belly is like, Belly's like, Belly's like a movie, like as like as like a glossy looking polished movie, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's facts. <laughs> that's facts. And um, I was gonna ask this a lot later, but I'm happy you brought it up earlier because like I love I love the rapper movie section of your column. Like that's. Like that's that's always been my favorite part of reading your shit every Friday. It's not always there, but whenever it is, it just <laughs> it just it just lights me up. Like because I just love that. Like a a I love it. You know, like obviously that's that's my shit. But it's like you don't really see very many people like devote time to writing about like rapper movies or like movies with rappers in them. And like as and like as like the movie and rap dude. That's like 
<laughs> like, I, 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 like that's my whole shit. So like, I was just curious, like while putting that together and like, while you, while you're doing that, like, what's the, what's the craziest one of those that you've seen that like really, really stuck with you, whether it was like really good or really trash, like. <laughs> Oof. I mean, the, the, there's so many, I mean, I'm trying to think what what my favorite. I mean, the the, fa- the some of the favorites are obvious. Like, you th- th- they're like some really great ones, like Tupac and Juice or whatever, or like yeah, Ice Cube and like Friday and stuff like that. But I'm trying to think. Of, I, honestly, my favorite one might be Ice T. Like, I, I, I love a, uh, I love some of those like early '90s like Ice T movies. Like before before he's like sells his soul to Dick Wolf. Um, right. <laughs> like surviving the game by one 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 of like one of my favorite directors like ever like Ernest Dickerson uh shout out to the god he's the best you no know, surviving the game is crazy man and <laughs> i think that comes after juice so people were probably like that's probably not what people wanted they were like why is ernest dickerson making like a Rucker Howard, like it's like it's like a Rucker Hauer and fucking hunting down ice ice tea in the woods or some shit. That shit is so hard. Um, <laughs> uh, another another good ice tea one is Trespass. That's a Walter Hill movie. That's that's also as ice tea ice cube. Uh, who else is in that shit? But that, that shit that shit is crazy too. But but I love myself like an early nineties ice tea movie. Man, I haven't seen enough because i haven't seen surviving the game even though like it's one of those that i've heard a bunch about but i never i never got to watch it and ever since i saw you write about it i've been meaning to like go watch it again or or not again but like for the first time and i'm gonna do it like like uh, like that's on my list with like finally starting succession so people could stop fucking telling me to start (laughs) watching succession but like (laughs) um but nah i just i just love like 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 rappers and movies are just there's just such a really i just love the connection between the two and just I, and like i just love seeing rappers in movies like it could even be something as stupid as like seeing like snoop and starsky and hutch like when that was out like <laughs> just i like i don't know it, it just makes me happy to see the, to, to just to see rappers in movies and to see them make movies you know like you know like watching like all the old master p shit and of course stuff like state property and fucking like even the Griselda movie conflicted <laughs> which was a well, lot but you know, <laughs> like, that, you know that, that's, mm. it's always a it's always a cool wrinkle just to see somebody even if it's just something as like uh even if something like kind of just like not that memorable or not that interesting or just a, ra- a rapper that's actually a good actor so it's, it's like there's like nothing to like poke fun at really like, right. like like most uh, Yasin Bay, like yeah. some, some 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 of his roles are just like they're like yo, this is just a solid. He's just a solid actor. Like I was watching him and uh, not too long ago, him in Sixteen Blocks. There the, you go. I was ha- I was hoping you were gonna say Sixteen Blocks. This, it's such a great the Bruce, movie. The Bruce Willis movie, and <laughs> it there's, there's really nothing to poke. I mean, you can poke fun at uh, Yasin Bay's doing like this this voice that is like insane in that movie. But but most but mostly he's just really just like a solid actor in that movie, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, between that and the movie where he played um the open heart surgeon, I forget his name, um in the little HBO shit. Um I've definitely never seen that. Oh man, it he was, he was an he, open heart surgeon. Yeah, he um he yeah, he played he played the doctor, I forget his name, but he was the first doctor to do an open heart surgery. It was a biopic. I can't remember what it was called, but um he was really good in that. He's really good in 16 blocks. Um he was he was um you ever see Cadillac Records, the movie about um, Cadillac Records? <laughs> I've, I've never seen it. No. Nah. Um, it's really good. He's in it. He plays Chuck Berry, actually. Oh. Um, I think like he's yeah he's in it. I think Idris Elba's in it. That was one of the first movies I ever saw him in. Uh, Beyonce was at a James. Uh, movie's crazy, but he's really really good in that too. Yeah, most deaf is like. He's or, or Yasin Bey, of course. I always, I always default to most, even though I know he's been Yasin Bey for a fucking decade. That's just yeah. my brain. But um, yeah, nah, rappers and movies, always, always a pleasure to see. Even, even, even if it's just like West Side Gun popping up in the last ten minutes of a movie to shoot a kid in the face. 
<laughs> like he does in Conflicted. <laughs> as a, as, he, like, he, he like really tries to go off on some like, he really tries to go off on some capo shit. And like, he kind of pulls off the role, but he just, yeah. he just shoots, a, he just shoots a kid in the face. And that's like, and like the movie's just over. And I'm like, why did he do that? <laughs> like, why did you shoot this kid in the face? It was a lot. Conflicted is a lot. If you if, if y'all can find it, go watch the Griselda movie. It's uh it's 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 pretty wild. <laughs> oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, that movie's pretty wild. It's uh it's 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 pretty wild. Um so from what I understand, you didn't really grow up like like reading a bunch of rap journalism. Is that right? Um, I mean, yeah, definitely I definitely did it. I definitely came to it later than um, maybe other people or just journalism in general like right just in that uh I feel like there are a lot of writers that you know like they, they grew up like just immerse themselves in journalism and just like they they went to journalism school and all that stuff like that like they wanted to be like they wanted to write about whether it's music or politics or whatever it is that they wanted to write about and I never really did that or had that and so I definitely was playing catch up. I still so am like playing, playing catch up. Right. But you know, you know, like obviously you don't have to you don't have to grow up in that shit to come into it and really like be great at it. Like plenty, plenty of people that we know and work with didn't start out that way either. Like I didn't really get into journalism like for real, for real, for real until like high school, you know? And like I didn't like and, and you know, like from then on I was like, I want to be a writer, but like so like for you, like when, like, when did you first realize that you, like, you wanted to actually start to cover the stuff that you had been listening to? And like, you, and, 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 and like, you're someone who grew up immersed in hip hop culture, especially like being in New York, like you were, you were like really in the thick of it. And it's not, it's not like you just like discovered both at the same time. And then just like, was like, oh, I want to do this. Like, when did you first realize you wanted to like make that a thing to do? Um, pretty late uh just because i've always i always loved rap music always been like i said like you, like you just said i've always been like pretty just has always been like my thing that i've loved but it really wasn't until the end of college really like 2017 2018 like around then um which is not that long ago even though it's becoming longer <laughs> ago uh <laughs> so I was, I was really just like in school you know, I went to school upstate New York at SUNY New Paltz, and I was just, I was just, I was just, I was just pretty bored, and I was just, I was kind of just looking for something to do, and I, I like read some stuff, you know, like maybe like go on Twitter or something to click on some like article of some of some rapper you like or something like that, right. um, click on some complex article or something, click on some the Fader article, uh, but but it wasn't anything that deep, and so. I, but 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 around that time it was just like I was just looking for something to do and then I, and I had a minor in school I had a film and criticism minor or some shit like that and it, it was it wasn't like the most in depth minor it was it was pretty basic but still it maybe I was like writing like essays about like whatever whatever movie we were watching in class whatever whatever, whatever they were making us watch like some trash Birth of Nation or some shit like that right uh, <laughs> uh, or like. I don't know, some breathless or something. Uh, and I, I was just like writing essays about that for for the for that film and video criticism mine. And I was like, huh, I kinda I kinda like this is cool. And so I just like wanted to like translate that to music. You know? Wow. It's like while we've been talking, it's actually like I'm just like really amazed at like how similar our paths were because that's like literally almost exactly what happened to me. Like I went to college, like, I, like, like cinema studies was my major and I was going to declare a journalism minor, but it wound up not happening because my minor advisor kind of fucked me over a little bit, <laughs> but, um, you know, shout out to her. She's great. But like, she kind of like, I, I think I needed to take like one more class or something. And I didn't because she didn't tell me I needed to. But, um, anyway, like, yeah, like I started out wanting to write about movies and then, as I started to get more into it, like in my senior year and when I graduated, then I kind of moved toward writing about music because I always had a hard time doing it. Like I loved music, but I just like couldn't write about it the way I could write about movies. And then I had people help me 
kind of get to that point and yeah you know like it's so like it's just like i just had to say that it's just crazy just like how like i get exactly where you're coming from <laughs> like and uh also i went to purchase so and you went to new pulse okay. so that, that, that's crazy oh yeah you're you're, you're, da- you're down purchase in like that's like westchester right mm-hmm. yeah 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 it's, yeah it's like right outside the city basically yeah. like 45 minutes so, yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, New Pulse is like New Pulse is fucking like up, 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 like up by fucking like I I don't know if it's like near, but how, how is it close to Buffalo? Like how nah. like how it, I didn't it, think it, so. It, it's nowhere near there actually. It's uh it's like Hudson Valley. It's near Poughkeepsie, so mm, it's okay. like okay. So it was like it was like an hour and a half up from like like the city, right? So it, yeah. it wasn't bad. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it, one of my one of my best friends lives out, in, or or he lived out in Poughkeepsie. I don't know if he still lives out there, but shout out to Adam. Um, so you know, <laughs> like once you kind of come to this realization that you want to move on, or, or or not move on, but like but that you really want to start like writing about uh, movies, and then of course that transitions into music. Um, you know, like many. Like many of our friends and contemporaries, you kind of cut your teeth over at Jeff's site over at Passion of the Weiss. And, you know, like, how did, how did writing, how did writing over at PAL and working with Jeff kind of help you improve your craft and put you on the path to where you are now? Um, I mean, definitely did a lot. I mean, I recommend anybody that wants to get started writing about rap to hit up jeff over there because i mean it was definitely just like trying to just like find the type of voice you want to write in and he definitely helped with that just tell just telling you letting you know like what's good what's too much just letting you know like yo you know the shit when you publish it it's going to be there forever basically like so like (laughs) chill out sometimes uh or something like that or just just letting you rock basically and not not in the way where you just do whatever you want, but like finding things that you're interested in and letting you write about it and having somebody like go over it and proofread it and edit it and just getting used to all of that. And I remember over there, he let me have a monthly like column that I did while I was in school. It was called like Beautiful Noise. And it was about, it was just like every month I would, talk about like New York rap songs that I would like and I'll just be there talking about like some of those early like New York drill records or some like Mike song or something like that and that really just helped me just like figure out like what I wanted to write about and I feel like Passion the Weiss is good for helping you figure that out helping you become like a better more comfortable writer right you know and like and you know you really you really developed a crazy voice over there and obviously you took that you took that over to pitchfork where you've been for a grip now i don't know exactly how long you've been there but like you've three years i think yeah something like that so like you know like how did like how does it feel to be one of the most controversial rap journalists on the internet my good friend (laughs) it's like no i'm not i'm playing (laughs) I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't think of it like that. I don't, I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I mean, of course, no, no, I'm just messing that, around. <laughs> no, that, that's just, that's just the nature of, I guess, because I'm, I'm mostly, and you, and you do too, write criticism, which isn't always received well, and I don't know. I guess, I, I guess, I could be strongly opinionated. And so I, I I usually understand where people are coming from, like when, you know, you, you don't like hear, and I and I could tend I could tend to be a little uh, making fun of things sometimes, and so you know instead instead of just being instead of like taking things completely seriously, like I feel that that's what people think of as music criticism in a way they think of music criticism as something that they would read in like the New Yorker or the New York Times. Not that those things can't right. be funny too, but they tend to be like a little bit more. They 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 take every single thing that they're doing seriously. Not that I don't take rap seriously. I think that one of the things I try to do is take forms of rap seriously that other 
places historically haven't. Right. Uh, and you do that. Like, you definitely do that. So, yeah. And also try to mix it with like being like, yo, this is not that deep. And let me clown on this a bit. And so I think that's part of the thing that some people don't respond that well to because just like, I mean, we're definitely in like an era right now where we're like, oh man, you got to think about the artists. Imagine how, you know, how hard they worked on this, yada, 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 yada. And the idea of punching up versus punching down, you know? And I feel like somewhere where you, where you can't go wrong. Sometimes I, I go wrong too, you know, just like um, trying not to punch down, I guess, on like, th there's no point in like panning somebody, like you, 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 could, you could criticize it, but you're not gonna like pan somebody who has right. like 20 plays on their song. Or, like, uh, you're not gonna write like this giant pan of them, but you know, just finding a balance. And I feel, I feel like it's a thing I'm still figuring out I feel like it's a thing that people online seem to be mixed about. And so it's tough. Right. Oh, yeah. Nah, it's like criticism is an art, not a science. You know, like there's no there, like there's no like magic formula that's going to make everybody love or like everybody agree with everything you have to say. And it's like and like that's one of the things that I kind of love and like fuck with about criticism so much is that like you can never really get perfect at it you know like it's always something that like it's one of those like easy to learn difficult to master things where like sometimes you're gonna knock it out of the park and other times like you know like uh, like sometimes everyone's gonna rally around it and be like this is amazing and sometimes they won't and like that pressure can be a lot like you know you know like I've felt it you know, like you felt it a bunch I know like you know like even just or or, or 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 maybe you haven't like 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 does that pressure kind of like does that pressure kind of play a role in like how you write about certain things or like do you um do you like do you, do you feel like do you feel like when you I, I mean you, actually you already kind of said it but I guess like expand on like what it means to kind of like how do I want to ask this question I don't know why I'm getting so tongue tied like does the pressure does the pressure of like do this right affect the way you write it all? <laughs> I, I I don't know if I asked that question right, but like, um, I mean, I feel like it probably does sometimes, but I try not to let that. I try to go into it with like how I want to go into it, you know, and try not to think about the response to it because that's when you'll just try to tell. Because usually you're talking about how sometimes it can be received well. Usually it's received well. It does really does have anything you just have to do with to think about that and try to just base it around like how I'm feeling about the album or mixtape or whatever, and not try to think about oh, will people agree with this? Will people not agree with this? And try to just really just go with my opinion. I think it's why I think, I feel like I was talking about this to somebody the other day. I was reading Richard Brody in the New Yorker and it, it's kind of like he just like exists in his own world where it just like uh, whatever he's writing about or whatever movie he's writing about, it's like unconcerned with what anybody else has to think about it. And it's just strictly just like his own view on it. Even if that view might be like fucking dumb or something but uh, <laughs> uh but no i i kind of i kind of respect that i think it's cool um, right no uh like i'm sure sometimes the shit everybody's fucking dumb too but uh you know i i really try to have it reflect what i'm actually thinking about the album without thinking about what other people are thinking about it you know right yeah it, like and 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 like it makes your work really honest, you know, like like depending, de like it, it it's it's of course dependent on like what the. I just I just I just like how honest your writing is because like because like I can tell that it's really coming from like you and you're really sitting with how you feel about something and even if even if it goes against whatever the general consensus might be, like you're you. You know, like regardless of whether people agree or disagree, like they can't say that that's not like, you know, like you like you come at it with a certain level of respect 
and like even like yeah like even when even when you're clowning it like you come at it with a certain level of like research and like respect that feels like even if you didn't like it or if you have like jokes for it like you at least know what you're talking about you know and yeah. like not a lot of people could say that <laughs> like it, it's it's I've I've I've, been, I've I've read some I've read some pretty ill-informed shit in my day <laughs> and yeah. like it's um it's just always uh regardless of what you have to say I'm always interested I'm always interested to see what you think about something because I know I'm gonna get like this is what he really thinks and it's not like you know like he's like like unless there's some like big overwhelming like conversation that needs to be addressed in a piece like you're coming at it from like a this is what I think you know and I think that's why people gravitate towards the stuff that you do and why people gravitate towards good criticism and on top of that like it feels regular you know like 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 you have you have opinions you have um you have a uh, context and history and an understanding of most of the artists you write about but you're not talking over anybody's head you're not using like you're not using like overly flowery or confusing language just for the hell of it like you're just writing you know and like that's a lot harder than people might think it is to just like write you know <laughs> so yeah. you know like you should definitely be commended for that for sure thank you and yeah I, def I definitely write somewhat how i not completely but somewhat how i talk and just like you know it's kind of just more conversational i guess just how i how how i would explain it to somebody and obviously not in like the, the format of like writing an album review or something like that, but just right. like <laughs> how I would go about saying what I like or dislike something. And I mean, I've, I've never been the type of person that uses like, not that there's anything wrong with using like larger, like an extended vocabulary or anything like that. Right, of course. But, 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 but you know, that's just not the way that I speak myself, you know? And so that's why I write like that. Right. So that's, you know, I just think like, I just think that voice is um, really, really important. And it's always like, um, I've just been thinking a lot over the course of the last like week about what it means, like what criticism means and like what role it holds in, you know, like the 2020s <laughs> where just like, we're, we're just like, there's like so many different kinds, like whether it's written or recorded or posted or whatever the fuck, you know, like, and just about like what it means to kind of, what it means to like split the difference between being like informed, but also reading like a person, you know, like it, it's like, obviously there's a time and a place for everything. Um, context is everything, but I, all, but like, I just always like, regardless of what kind of language people use, because like, I know that I can kind of get a little, I can get a little esoteric and like, up there with my words sometimes and I try not to go too crazy with it. But it's, it, it, it's, it's all dependent on the situation. And I just always appreciate people who have this really great mix of like, understanding and knowledge, but putting it forward in a way that like people just get, you know, like, like, like I look for that shit in my favorite rappers too. Like people who can break these really complex ideas and thoughts down in a way that doesn't always require you to have to go look it up afterwards. Sometimes that's cool, but it doesn't always have to be like that, you know? A subliminal at J Electronica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but like, but like I said, there's a time and a place for everything. And, um, and just like, I just, I'm, I'm just always really interested in that relationship. And you're someone that I always think of because I just like, you just put it out there and it's just like very, it, it, it's, it's just like digestible, but not in like a, it's digestible in like a fun and engaging way. You know, like it's, it's, it really feels like this is somebody who cares and like lives this shit in a, like it, like, yeah, I just like that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I just fuck with that a lot. Thank you. Of course. Of course.
Like, and another thing, another thing I love about your writing, other than, you know, like, other than the fact, other than your sense of humor and how you put that forth is like, just like the sheer breadth of shit you cover, bro. Like you're like, you're tapped into like, you're just tapped into every, well, 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 like not every facet, but like, there's just so much that you write about, like between like all like the New York underground shit that we both fuck with, like the Atlanta shit, everything going on in Michigan, shit going on on, uh, out in Cali, just like all the Digicore stuff. Like you just really bring, you really bring that level of respect and research to just like everything you write, which I think like every good writer worth their salt does, but it just comes across super dope. Like, is it like, like, is it ever hard to kind of keep up with all is it, it like does it ever get like do you ever get overwhelmed like is that like is there ever a point where you just kind of need to like step away and kind of like reassess at all or have you kind of figured out a way to just like process things the way you need to process them i'm really fucking up asking these questions right now i don't know what's wrong with me from from a writing standpoint or from just like a, like listening to me like listening to all these different scenes and all that stuff um i probably more the second one honestly um um no i don't think so because i'm never trying to like i feel like i that would happen if i was like overtly trying to be like oh i want to learn more about this scene or more about that scene um it's kind of it's kind of just more natural and usually the things i'm writing about there's just things that i'm just listening to or things that i come across naturally and if one week I happen to be listening to a lot of South Florida rap, I'm going to be talking about a lot of South Florida rap. If one week I happen to listen to a lot of LA rap, I'm going to be happen to listen to a lot of LA rap. If one week I'm deep in the SoundCloud trenches listening to Digicore and Plug, I'm going to be talking about Digicore and Plug, you know? Just, right. And it's never like me trying to f- force it. And so by not doing that, I feel like I'm never... I'm usually not overwhelmed. That's great because, you know, I feel like a lot of people looking at this from the inside out kind of feel like the opposite about that. And it's not, and and it's usually not like, it's very easy to tell when somebody's writing about or covering music that they like are just listening to just because they'd be doing that anyway like it's really cool to be able to just like hop in and just like dissect it right away having little to no experience with it but like yeah people grab but like people gravitate towards this type of stuff because they can tell that this is like it feels organic and it feels natural and they want to hear what like you or I or you know anybody has to say about it because they get it you know and like I said, like, this is like, l- like I said, and like you said, like, this is just stuff that people are just listening to. And I get overwhelmed sometimes, but that's more just because I just take on too much work <laughs> more than it is just like, because c- 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 like, I can tell that you'd be listening to this, even if you weren't writing about it. And I can say the same about me, yeah. you know, and that's why we're here, because we love this. And you, it, you write a lot. I, I, I was I was thinking about that. I'm like, yo, he, he, he got chill out. I'm <laughs> I haven't made it there yet, but like I'm feeling it right now. There's there's some shit I got going on that I'll tell you about when we're not recording. But yeah. like, yeah, just like I love this, and bills have to be paid, so I'm out here <laughs> until I'm out here until I uh, I'm out here until I don't have to be. <laughs> but i love it you know like it's it's not it's not even it's not even about that like like most people most people are here because like obviously we're here for the money but like most people are here because we love this and it means something to us and we want to help preserve it and talk about it because we get it and that's something that's always going to be really important regardless of what form like journalism takes over the course of the next like decades and you you, you know like whether we're still writing or like just any any sort of coverage like having people who care about the shit 
at places that people respect and creating new places that people respect is just like, this is another thing I've been thinking about a lot. Just like journalism in general has been splintering for a really long time. And it's just gone through so many different ups and downs. Um, but like, I feel like our corner of music journalism, just like rap specifically, like there's so many different voices and perspectives and people are creating all sorts of different new outlets for it that aren't beholden to like, you know, like the pitchforks and the faders and the complexes. And, you know, like as important as those outlets are, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that we, ex I'm just happy that like, you know, like somebody, you know, like you can go to a place like Nobel's and write about plug music, you know, like <laughs> that just like that shit just makes me yeah. really happy to see and just like and just like people and it's like people like Mano and people like Gary um and just like people kind of keeping that spirit alive on their own that shit just makes me really happy oh, yeah. oh, I'm <laughs> sorry so, so, something's happening outside um <laughs> that was weird uh man I just lost my train of thought what the fuck is going on out there all right, never mind. Um, so last question I have for you to kind of like just wrap this up is, you know, like there's plenty, there's plenty of voices and perspectives and things are moving in all sorts of different directions right now, especially as like the year is closing out. Like what role, what role do you feel that like journalism and criticism specifically plays in the world of music consumption in, I, well, I want to say in 2021, but it's about to be over. But like, what, but, 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 but like, what do you feel like our role is in times like these where journalism's kind of like kind of misunderstood and in some cases even just flat out disrespected? Like, what role do you think we play in all of this shit? Um, just adding a human component to the algorithm dominated universe, you know? just being able to have someone or a writer distinguish between what they feel is good and what they feel is not good, what they feel is in the middle, you know? And I mean, personal taste is the coolest thing, you know? That's why at the end of the year, you know, I wanna see people's personal lists, you know? I don't, I don't really care about the, the big list as, as, as much as, you know, because you know they're just they're they're more of like a a gathering a a gathering of thoughts. Well, I mean, what's cool about reading somebody like individually is just like hearing what they think, what they think works, what doesn't, what can be done better, what can be done less. I don't know. And I mean, I feel like that's that's the important part because when you go on Spotify, it's just sending you things that either you've heard before or things that or similar to things that you've heard before or things that are almost literally made in a lab for you to like and which is fine but you know having that human component too to expand your taste or add context to what you're listening to or is like I don't know I think it's invaluable you know no I agree like we put our trust in other people in that way just like just like I trust you enough to have you tell me what you think is cool. And like, no matter what anybody says, regardless of how advanced algorithms get, nothing is ever going to beat like human word of mouth. You know, like word of mouth is word of mouth is the most like that shit just gets everything moving so fast. Like you and I were talking about uh, Red Rocket yesterday or, or, yeah. or, or a couple of days ago. And like, I, had, I was already like interested enough to like to hear you say like, I'm gonna go see it. Like, I was like, you know, like I, I was already interested enough, but I was like, okay, like now I'm more interested, you know, because I trust you, you know, yeah. and I feel like that's, I feel like that's the role, you know, like I think, I think you hit it right on the head is like, you know, like I talked to, um, I talked to Chuck Strangers about this when I interviewed him last year and he was just like, he was just like taste, he, he basically just said like taste is just something that like, you can't really teach that. You know, like you could have you could have like all the technical expertise in the world, but if you don't have any taste, nobody wants to hear your shit. You know, yeah. and who wants to listen to some shit that was fucking some playlist that was put together by 
using a graph or some shit, bro. Like, get that right. out of here. Like, yeah, <laughs> like nobody, nobody, like that's not that's not really reflective of anything. You know, it's just reflective of what people are listening to the most, which isn't always gonna be what's good. You know, and um, I'm just really appreciative of people like you. And just like, I could sit here and name names for fucking 45 minutes, but there's just so many incredible people who work in the space and even out of this space, you know, like people who don't get paid for this shit, who have incredible taste and they just love it, you know? And like, we're all lucky to be in a position where we get paid to kind of dole out this taste. And um, I just, I just kind of have, I'm just kind of having this, like one of those like cosmic, like, I'm just so happy to be here type of things you know like it's just I, I don't know I'm just happy that I'm just happy that people care and that people care to listen to people who care I don't know I'm getting a little too deep into my feelings right now but you know I um yeah I feel you huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you know I don't have any more questions that's basically it but um Al thank you man this is like it's this was really eye-opening for me. And it's just, it's just, it's just great to, it's just great to get to talk to somebody whose like background is so close to mine in a lot of ways that I'm like just now realizing. Like it's it's been great to it like it's been great to finally be in a place where I'm like working with you because I've been a fan of your work for a minute. But um, you know, I'm just thank you. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for agreeing to be the season finale of this show. Like that means the world. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me and all the kind words, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, of course. You know, like this is like, like kindness is in short supply right now. And I just want to give it up to everybody who I fuck with, who's doing good shit. And, you know, I just appreciate you giving me your time and coming to just talk about silly shit with me before before you really start your day so just like thank you bro no doubt thanks for listening shout out to y'all for making it this far and shout out to all the black people listening too because y'all really impeccable don't forget to like subscribe and tell a friend to come through next time one